Here's the thing, everybody. It's leaf blower day at my apartment complex, and I'm grateful for a clean place, but we're just gonna go for a walk for this video. Oh my, is it bright. I swear the leaf blowers are following me. <laughs> I'm walking down the road. It's very beautiful here. I just don't wanna show you exactly where I live, but what a gorgeous day. Do y'all know I'm into walking now? Last week I think I hit 40 miles. And I love it, it's my new thing. They're on the move. Look how cute they are. They just, they're trying to find the rest of the herd. Oh, here's some of the sheep. They're my buddies, I love the sheep. That's like the best part of walking on this little stretch is right now, there's a million sheep here. And I'm sure they'll be gone soon, but for now it's been a nice welcome to Nashville. They're like my main friends. I was out here the other day with my buddy Colton and we saw the sign that says Nashville Chew Crew. And he was like, that sounds like a hit to me. And I was like, damn it, Colton, if you write some big bro country song about a bunch of guys with a pack of dip called the Chew Crew, we'll know it's the sheep and you to blame. Okay, I saw this picnic table and I could put my tripod on it. So I pulled off into this random little parking lot. But today I just wanted to talk about 15 random good things about country music right now. And I just keep observing things that are just good for country in my perspective. It fits my mood, I wanna lean into this vibe today, so let's look at them. Numero uno is that Haley Witter's Everything She Ain't is finally happening on TikTok. Yeah, boy, I can be the whiskey in your soda. Me your I've seen this trend all over TikTok and people are making videos where they say they're having a bad day and then the double clap happens and you transition into something happy. It's become a huge viral trend. Who would listen to this? Yeah, boy, I can be. Go you would. <laughs> and I'm just happy for her. That song is so overdue to become a hit. Raised is one of the albums of the year. Man, I just hope it happens. I hope it happens. Cause it's already like really skyrocketing on iTunes and stuff. The second thing I have is that Sunday Best and Muscadine Bloodline seem to have become friends. All of my life I wonder so down. They've been touring together a little bit this year and they're posting so much stuff together and now they're even singing together and this is like a meeting of two of the great independent country duos. If you weren't on board with country music back in like 2014, that's when Sunday Best was really happening uh, with Painted Blue, Thunder, Four Door was my favorite song. They're awesome, and Nicholas Jamerson has one of the best voices in all of music. He's so effortless with how much he can sing. But now they're teamed up with Muscadine, and I feel like Muscadine has a little bit more of this swagger, showmanship, like social media savvy about them, and I just think this is a match made in heaven to me. And it's just good. It's just good for country music that they're becoming buddies. Number three on my list is that Asha McBride has announced a new album called Lindyville. It's a concept record. I wonder if people are gonna get on board with this whole idea of like a newspaper kind of backstory. Overshore has a whole video about it, but I'm pumped that Asha McBride is back and releasing new music. Not only is she awesome, she's also a friend of the channel. We, I have an interview with her way back during quarantine and uh, I can't wait to hear that music. <sighs> it didn't fly. Number four is that Kane Brown is a huge fiddle fan. I listened to his new album, Different Man, the other day, and it's a weird album. It's very much a Kane album where you get songs like Whiskey Sour right next to songs like Grand, but most of the tracks on there have extremely prominent fiddle. To me, it makes the pop stuff go down a lot easier because it almost reminded me of Ian Munsick, how he was like fusing fiddle with his pop sound, but if you ask me, are there worse things than one of the biggest stars in country music and one of the poppiest stars in country music loving the fiddle? Yeah, there's way worse things than that. I think it's cool for a lot of people to get introduced to that sound at the very least. So if you hate Kane Brown, there's your silver lining. Oh my gosh, speaking of silver linings, clouds, please. I gotta find a new spot. While I'm looking for a new spot, I'll just say number five, is that Kit Moore and Morgan Wade seem to actually be prepping for a release of If I Was Your Lover. You know I love you. That's exactly what I freaking said in my last Yeehaw Yeehaw. So I'm happy about it. 
and I think I found some shade. Number six is that Burn, Burn, Burn by Zach Bryan dropped, and it's awesome. Lay in a field on a cozy blanket and feel the fear of never waking. It's just got this classic American traveler feel toward it, and when he's talking about wanting to be in Paris, it's just like so like overly romantic, almost storybook in a way. It almost reminds me of Before Sunrise, the movie. If you've never seen that movie, I would say it's the most romantic movie ever. I like to feel his eyes on me when I look away. I love that people love that stuff. When you go to a concert of his and people are standing in the rain screaming the lyrics to the top of their lungs, which is what I did a couple days ago, it's so inspiring to see that this is the type of thinking man's music that people want to vibe to. Number seven is this whole speech from Hardy at the ACM Honors event. In 2015, I was playing a songwriter round with a tip jar on the front of the stage, and we might have made $10 in tips, but one person wrote quit on a napkin, and they put it in that tip jar. And tonight, that quit napkin will be sitting right beside this I think I'm inspired by people that learn how to take hate and kind of turn it into their drive. It certainly took me a long time to be able to do that just online. So he's doing it on a much bigger scale. And I think he's an amazing writer. Number eight actually happened at that same event, ACM Honors, when Avril Lavigne sang a song for Shania Twain. No one is to know right now. Why is this good for country music? Well, as you all know, I have a selfish ambition of wanting Skater Boy to get the 90s country cover it deserves. Because I just believe that song with its class issues, with its sort of three-part story about a snooty girl and this guy who then becomes a rock star. It's just asking for a song to feel almost like a... She's in love, boy. She's in love. I've been banging this drum for a couple years now and a bunch of people actually covered it back in the day. He was a boy, she was a girl, and I make it any more obvious. But look, Avril at ACM Honors, I'm just saying, can't like Lainey Wilson or Haley Witters give us this kind of like revival, skater boy, country girl sound? It's a great idea. Number nine is that Don Schlitz was inducted into the Grand Ole Opry. If you don't know who Don Schlitz is, he's a songwriter that has written, this is just a few of them, Deeper Than the Holler, as well as Forever and Ever Amen for Randy Travis, as well as The Gambler for Kenny Rogers, as well as When You Say Nothing At All, for Keith Whitley. The smile on your face lets me know that you need me. There's a truth. In the entire history of the Opry, only 233 people have been inducted, and he's one of them. And I got to be there that night, and I got to meet Randy Travis that night, you know. Shout out to his publicist, Zach. We'd met before because of the Randy Travis painting in the background of my videos, but uh, he came out on stage as Don was singing Forever and Ever Amen and gave such a poignant speech about how he, as a songwriter that's not famous, has kind of become this gateway to these beloved songs because Kenny's gone, Keith is gone, and, and Randy, you know, doesn't really sing anymore. It was just really poignant and beautiful. And of all the things I've done in Nashville so far, I think the Opry is the thing that I felt lived up to its mystique. Number 10 is Cole Chaney's Our Vinyl Session. I have lived a life of sorrow. I'm so excited that Cole Chaney is really catching wind in his sails. The same people that have loved Charles Wesley Godwin or Zach Bryan in the last few years. They're, they're, the word is out about Cole Chaney, which makes me so happy because he's so talented with such a cool holler voice. And I think my favorite track is Spirit. Spirit. And I've seen it live now a couple times. He plays with a band called Wolfpen Branch that is bellissimo. And I really hope when he, we get the final version of Spirit, we get all the strings building, but even just this one, I'm so happy to have it. That bridge gets to me when he says, I don't want to hurt no more, it gets to me. It's so windy out here. I have my journal. This was when I was trying to sketch out what Carousel by Miranda Lambert might look like. And that turned into a different art project on my, you've seen it on my Instagram, but. 
My number 11 is Chapel Heart getting so much exposure from America's Got Talent. I really genuinely love Chapel Heart's album, The Girls Are Back in Town from last year. I remember when I heard it and I sent it to some people that I know at labels and stuff in town. And I'm like, tell me this is not like meant to be right next to kind of like big tailgate concert where they're playing party songs or something. Like I just think that album has a lot of freshness to it, rough around the edges but fresh. That's why it made my list last year. Although I admit they fully botched this last performance. I was like, that's a disaster. You can tell that they weren't happy with it, that the lead singer was sick. They have still gotten themselves such a bigger audience with that show, and I'm glad they did. Number 12 is that Orange is having a moment in country music. A lot of people have talked about whether everyone is copying Zach Bryan's something in the orange. I think more likely we are in a weird coincidental mode where there's songs like Burnt Orange by Clayton Mullen and then the one-two punch of Connor Smith's Orange and White and Megan Maroney's Tennessee Orange, both of which are about the same thing, about a guy from Tennessee and a girl from Georgia needing to sort of like change their colors because of this relationship and he's teaching her old Rocky Top. It's uncanny how similar those songs are. I will say I met Megan Maroney this week out and about and I just asked her directly are y'all like conniving geniuses that are trying to create some convo uh, and release the same song she said no it was a coincidence so it's what I've been told a coincidence but I actually love Megan's song Tennessee Orange I love it I think it's beautiful the way you kind of fall into the melody when she says, I met somebody, you really do fall into it. It makes me feel like strawberry wine. The reason this is good for country, well, I don't really know. I just like trends. I think they're fun. But I guess think of orange. If you were the color orange and the joke everyone's made about you your whole life is that nothing rhymes with orange, it's got to feel so nice to suddenly be in all of these songs, you know? Have your moment, Orange. I support you. Number 13 is this Greenville Country Music Festival. I don't even know what it's called exactly, but to me it's good news because it is being headlined by Zach Bryan and the Turnpike Troubadours. And the names on this list, to me, are very exciting because you've got guys like that as well as people like Jonathan Payton, 49 Winchester, this very like indie scene. And this was a festival that was headlined by Sam Hunt last year. But then you've also got Ernest in the mix and you've also got Larry Fleet. It, it demonstrates a lot of different things to me. One, that major festivals that used to have people like Sam Hunt play them as the headliner are recognizing the power of this more independent side of country music and how ravenous the fan base is. But also, you know, people that very much exist in the mainstream country world want in on that too, and the festivals are willing to merge them, and that's becoming more and more normalized. It's not just like pop country fest and, you know, Montana whatever fest. I'm sure there's one out there. Ernest especially, obviously he's written a lot of songs for Morgan Wallen, but then him and Hardy both are kind of buddies with Co Wetzel, and so they're creating that bridge, and all these scenes that used to be so different, like Texas, Appalachia, uh, mainstream, independent. People are realizing they can work with each other, create new institutions, and a new mainstream when the radio mainstream isn't working for everybody anymore. Okay, it's actually 4.56 right now and people are starting to leave work and I'm just sitting in their parking lot and I cannot in good faith keep filming here because this is too damn awkward. <laughs> like there's, no. Okay, I'm back in my room. It's so nice to have a controlled environment. The leaf blowers are gone. Number 14 is that the shift in music is happening. When I look at records like John Party's Mr. Saturday Night and the sheer variety of musical, beautiful instrumentation on that record and that people love it. When I look at someone like Lainey Wilson with her great voice, with her thick twang, with her country stylings and people love it. That's exciting to me that people in the mainstream are reacting in this way to a movement that has been outside of the mainstream until now. I wanna remind y'all that we are in the midst of a sort of populist uprising within country music and it's glorious to see. A decade ago, it felt like an unproven theory. You could just feel a certain energy around Sturgill, around Tyler. People would talk really passionately about the Turnpike Troubadours, but now it feels like that dream that we had of a time in country music where those types of names were filling up arenas where radio, even though they didn't wanna play them, was being forced to play them. We're like kinda at that time. 
I think we are on the precipice of a true golden age of country music. I mean it. When you look at the class in 1989 and you see all of these people come up that are now the classics, Randy Travis and George Strait and Reba, they really changed the game at the time for country music and I just feel like that's now happening. Now, Zach Bryan is one of our biggest stars. Now, the industry is starting to actually kind of like a little bit more of a twang of a western aesthetic of actual fiddle all over albums like we're reaching this place where now the people that were just making the kind of r&b pop country trash are like i guess this is what the kids like also i look so nice in this shot should i have a blue thing behind me all the time but i just want to like shore up our troops and remind y'all like we're winning the freaking battle because the music is getting more musical. The lyrics are getting smarter. Even having songs like Wait in the Truck blow up like a weird death ballad. We're liking interesting songwriting again. What's that? Don't be dismayed by the bad music. And I know there's a lot of bad music. But be encouraged by what is actually starting to take off and not just in little sneering hipster circles. In real life. And that brings me to my number 15 point, which is that the young generation of country music gets it. I spent so much of yesterday up in my feels in a good way, reflecting on a generation of rising country singers that are playing a totally different game, that have an independent spirit about them, that are releasing music through their own platforms, building audiences, and doing so confidently. And it's great music too. Like Low Gap, these two little brothers from Ohio. They're in high school, I think. Their song Mockingbird is probably my most played song of the year. Mockingbird, Mockingbird, do you really mean the words? And I love just seeing how they act on social media. It's so effortless and cool and they're willing to promote themselves. They don't feel some type of precious way about it. And their song is great. I felt the same way about Tucker Nicell when I shouted him out in my last video for his song Wrist Tattoo. I mean, I told that dude make a video and he made a video and it's done well for him. It got shared on freaking Zach Bryan's story this week. I got tagged yesterday in this girl Rachel McIntyre Smith's uh, TikTok about why she thinks her music would get a yeehaw on my channel and you know it tickled me it made me laugh and hearing what she said and what she valued in her own music about no I've got a lot of steel guitar I don't use throwaway lyrics I think about these things I think you would like that Grady it's uh <laughs> choked up by that it's um flattering that anyone would care really so much what I think but it's it's more exciting to me that there are people that want to make something great. <laughs> Maybe that's all I represent to them is just, oh, he, he's like trying to think about the music and I want to make music that people think about. We'll just keep on trying until we all start dying. Yesterday was just like that for me. I was, I was like this all day, just reflecting on the art that people are making. Maggie Antone. One of the best voices I've ever heard. She doesn't even have any songs on streaming platforms. She's just like this cool girl on TikTok and Instagram. Man, I was listening to some of her originals on her YouTube channel and... I ain't even close to being sober. So just kiss me before the party's over. Look, if I believe in a song of yours, I'm gonna hop in your DMs and tell you to get a good version of it horizontal because selfishly, I wanna use it in my videos. But also, I want you to have that out there, a good version of yourself because people wanna see you, hear you, and then they'll go stream you. What's so cool is for the most part, this next gen gets that. They don't want the whole traditional pathway. They don't need a feature in some magazine or to do a lame exclusive premiere with some outlet. They're just like, I can communicate directly with my fans. I can distribute my music how I want to distribute it. And it's good music and it's cool. And really it's that independent spirit that I love. You know, sometimes I feel almost like a proverbial big brother to this next generation of country nerds and some of whom have watched the channel or whatever. And uh, people message me and want me to listen to their songs. And all I want to do is just fan this flame of people that want to create something great. To me, it feels like we're, we're getting this cool era of artists that want to make art, not artists that just want to be famous. There's just so many inspiring, great talents. And I'm proud of y'all. <laughs> I guess that's what I'm saying. So there's this video. 
Is this the worst video I've ever made? It honestly could be, but it's just what was on my heart today. And I want to keep it fresh here, so it's nice to just be chill on camera with you guys.